Hey guys, my name is Tyler and I'm here to talk to you about our new YouTube channel. It's called The Proof is in the Concept. And what this channel is about is four guys who are best friends and we're going to have some other friends coming in and out that are going to be talking about media. Uh, we're going to be talking about books, music, movies, video games, tabletop games, and uh, role-playing games. These are all things that we're passionate about and things that are really thriving today. Um, as, you know, culture shifts and things that were typically considered nerdy are now cool and so forth uh, in this post-Napoleon dynamite world we live in, uh, we want to take a, a minute to offer our perspectives. We have been involved in all these aspects of quote nerd culture for a long time and we love them and we love that other people are loving them we're not those uh, nerd hipsters that are hating on people for liking Marvel movies but never having touched a comic book we're not those guys um, and what we are is a group of friends that really enjoys all this different media and we want to tackle it together um, and just analyze it have some fun with it and get you guys involved in it um, the great thing about all this nerd culture is that people feel really attached to it and I'm super excited to uh, share some of those attachments with you guys so maybe you're not super big into Dungeons Dragons um, I can tell you why I love it and maybe me telling you why I love it will make you want to give it a try um, you know I can tell you why I love Batman uh, you know because who doesn't but if you don't love Batman maybe I can convince you to love him or maybe uh, I can start a conversation and I can get to understand why you don't like him trust me that's going to be a hard sell anyway um, that's just an idea of what this content is going to be about so today we're going to be showing you our first video and because it's the start of the new year we're going to be talking about video games and the video games that we're most looking forward to in 2015. Uh, the guys, of course, my buddy Nick, my brother Tobias, and my brother Thadran, and I had a cool conversation with it. That, uh, we did a Google Hangout and recorded it. And um, we have some opinions that agree, some varying opinions, uh, but it's a really fun video that we had a lot of fun making, and we hope that you enjoy watching. Check it out. I'm your host, Tyler Sweeney. I am Thadrian of Rivercleft. And I'm Tobias Sweeney. I'm Nick. And today we're kicking off our channel with our first video. Uh, it's New Year, and we're talking about our most anticipated video games of 2015. Now, uh, Mr. Rivercleft here um, has made it pretty clear that he has a short list. So, uh, Thadrian, why don't you explain to, us, explain to us a little bit what that list looks like? Okay, well, um, I didn't do my homework. <laughs> uh, in fact, I was accidentally added to this video call on my cell phone. I don't even have a webcam. But my <laughs> game choice is Legacy of the Void, the third installment of StarCraft mm -hmm. II by Blizzard, Correct. obviously. Um, I just finished Heart of the Swarm recently because I got, like, a job and stuff. Um but I finally caught up with the things that matter. Um, like liberating Octurus Ment from his mortal coil. <laughs> Whoa. <Spoilers. laughs> what? It's been over a year. Really if you haven't played The Legacy of the Void by now, it's your own damn fault. We'll leave it in post. We'll leave it in post. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, and I think the thematics are great. The game is great. And it just, you know, we've been waiting since 1998 to finish this story. So. Yeah. Not even confirmed that it would be announced as coming out in this year, but well, the beta is happening in this year, so we can assume that oh, yes. it's going to be here we in this can year. Say that I can immediately make an exception to our rule before we even got going. By yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we'll get it by Christmas though. Maybe yeah. it'll be like your Christmas Hopefully. present. Wrap wrap yeah, it up. I think the beta is supposed to be around the summertime. So yeah. 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 it's my turn months. to buy the special edition, by the way. Yes, it is. Is the um, is the beta gonna be uh, multiplayer only? Or yeah, just they, they always do a new beta yeah. for the multiplayer stuff because they always That's introduce a couple new units and stuff. Like that. Sure. Yeah, the it's cool thing about that is tactic actually, because they can do some 
in the guise of giving you this bonus material, they're actually doing balance research. No, I know. It's, it's, it's great. It's like it's offloading the labor onto you. It's like Ikea. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's cool. But that's also... I mean, that's a good Blizzard Activision. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you why know, I mean, you don't see demo discs it. anymore. You don't see no, demo discs don't. in magazines and stuff like that anymore. It's yeah. because beta, betas are the new demos. It's, um, you know, because they can actually learn something from it. They don't just send you a disc and then, like, see if you bitch about it on a message board. Like, they, they, you know, <laughs> they, like, get active, yeah. they get active data. Um, you know. Yeah, they also have a starter edition. Um, you can download for free. Yeah. That's cool. Get you addicted to it. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's like this potentially nice but potentially conniving thing. Yeah, Blizzard's kind of good at that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's what they're doing. They're they're high end. Yeah. The other thing though, the cool thing about that is even though you're getting the last part of this game, hypothetically, the multiplayer on this could hold you over until like 2028. 20, yeah. You know what I'm saying. You, like, you'll be stealing. playing StarCraft yeah, online it's... forever. Especially I mean, with, like, the because like, they give you all the tools for the map editor and stuff like that. Like, you know, yeah. go oh, into the arcade God. and just, yeah. like, we, you know, we, Thade and I played vo volleyball together for, like, a week, yeah, uh, which was, was like, dodgeball. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, StarCraft okay, Dodgeball, like which weeks. was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was I'm amazing. Waiting, honestly, Ridiculous. because uh, I, I think I told you guys about that. Those people that created Final Fantasy VII in Little Big Planet. Oh man, I need to look oh, into that because, like, I would finally get around to playing Final Fantasy VII. You can play all the Final Fantasy VII <laughs> as oh, Sackboy in like, the engines of Little Big Planet Two. Like, uh, what could I mean? Like, I'm just saying, with the right map editors, like, we could be we. I mean, we could you know, like, have like Mass Effect with StarCraft units. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? By yeah. 2020, or you could change you know. the ending. <laughs> <laughs> like we don't have enough Never green so. and orange beans to really fully. Apparently, there was like a sure. recut that you can mod into the computer version, oh, where it basically just like after like the thing, it just cuts out like the Star Kid thing and just skips right to the red explosion because <laughs> that's the right one. I, like let's let's be real, that's the else. correct choice. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, wow. Yeah. Still. Okay. We have a too little, too list late. From someone who isn't a hooligan. Yeah. So Tobias, why don't we go with you? All Tobias, right. About your... So I'm gonna I'm gonna work. start with my number five pick, um, which I know my my first three are gonna be on someone else's list, and I'm not sure about my top two. Um, my number five pick is Uncharted Four from Naughty Dog. Because it's like the most visually stunning thing I've ever seen, and they they're opening up the battlefield so that we can uh, you know have a little bit more movement. Also, I think we lost Thade. Um, Thade, that's cool. Oh, there he's back. back. Um, All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, I figure this is gonna be on some other people's lists, so we can go into it a little bit more later. Um, number four is gonna be Arkham Knight, which I know is gonna be on some other people's lists. Um, from Rocksteady, <clears throat> um, because Batman, like, I don't really need to explain that. Um, so my list is a sub. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my third is going to be Legacy of the Void, uh, just because StarCraft is, like, means a lot to me as a being. Like, it's kind of taught me how to do everything that I do, sort of. Um... <laughs> And then, so my number, my number one, and number two, I want to talk a little bit more about because they're the ones I'm most excited about, but also they're the ones I'm fairly certain are not going to be on other people's lists. Um, so my number two pick is Shadow Realms, which is Bioware's new IP, um, oh, I forgot about that. where basically uh, it's like a uh, slightly in the future but post like magical apocalypse. So it's like a bunch of dudes in like skinny ties with magic wands and like biker jackets with like battle axes, and like it looks like super cool. Um, but what I'm mostly excited about it is it's one of the big forerunners in this new movement of game of video games, which actually came from board games um, of a four versus one sort of thing. Um, so each of the players controls a hero, and then they go into a dungeon, which is controlled by the the Shadow Lord, who's like this ghost who can like spawn more enemies and uh, like deploy traps and like you know assume direct control. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you as the Shadow Lord move. Invisibly around yeah. the level. Yes. It's, so it's, like, it's kind of like Sims from Hell. Yeah, kind of. Um, 
You're like going around and constructing this stuff, and they don't even know it's. Yeah, going yeah, on. it's crazy. Oh, and even the, I think as one of the versions of the Shadow Lord, you can like do a doppelganger yourself into one of the players, and then like, like you can like show up in like their chat bar and stuff like that. Like it's like absolutely insane. Yeah. Well, uh. then um, I also so like when they make it if they make it through the dungeon, they have to fight you as a giant demon. At the or, yeah, then there's like some sort of boss thing. Uh, yeah, like, I, the thing that's super cool about it, though is it's all done in it's all done in instances. So like that's like the main like sort of like combat stuff. But then outside of that, it's everyone's got their own single player thing where it's just like every other Bioware game that kicks ass, where it's got this awesome story with these awesome characters and all the dialogue trees and the romance options and like all that sort of stuff. So it's it's basically like you have all the cool things that you like about single player Bioware games with this like new four versus one format mixed in. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that earlier in your list there wasn't another four pers four versus one player. Oh, evolve. Um, no. the, uh, that's what I thought was gonna be on your list. Oh, because I already played that because I got into the alpha. Oh, um, oh, right. Yeah. So I kind of already like have been there. Um, I don't own it, okay. but did you see that new? Did you see that new? Um, what was it called? Behemoth. Yeah. Uh, the new Behemoth concept thing they released. It's like a yeah, video. it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. I'm just excited because, like, I'm excited by the about Evolve. The thing I'm excited about it is, like, the idea of, like, buying a new monster for it for six ninety nine like, every yeah. couple of months. You know what I'm saying? Shit That's, like that. yeah. That's exciting. Them microtransactions, you know? I'm about that. Anyway, so Tobias. My number um, one. This is it. Shadow Realms sounds super dope. What Shadow Realms is going to be super dope. My number one, which I'm pretty sure you called this, Tyler, No uh, Man's Sky from Hello Games. <laughs> 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 that, look, there it is, folks. Yeah, you wrote it down first. Before yeah. we started, you wrote it down. The other one I thought might be on your list. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Oh, man. Yeah. That game yeah, also looks super cool. Uh, side note, more risky, yes. Apotheon is this, like, side-scroller action RPG thing, but it's all based in Greek vase art, so it's all, like, the kind of rust background with the black ink, and it just looks really cool. And I like, I'm into Greek mythology. I just took a class on it last semester. Yeah. Now, it's like, if I call terracotta, the music in, sir. What? What was that then? I think you mean terracotta, sir. Oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. No, I thought you were like, you were getting on my back about saying shit. And I was like, dude, we can fix it in post, man. <laughs> because, no, because, like, it, man. I, like, I saw it, like, in the art, like, the way they had, like, the light blue, like, yeah. in the swirls and then in the Greek key. Yeah. And I was like, dude, it's like... It's like everything you love about the musical numbers with the what are they called the, the muses yeah yeah in, the, in Hercules but a Dude, video yeah, game. It's like the cutscenes from Hercules turned into a video game yes. yeah but like the but like whatever but like the, with a like the intensity though looks like it's cranked up a bit oh yeah it's, it's like there's like blood and guts it's more like you know three hundred it's yeah a little more three hundred like you know like actual Iliad kind of but the thing I was gonna it's say like, real, uh, quick, real quick guys. The, hmm? um, out of war. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The other night when I was super drunk, I totally watched Hercules. Oh, it is. I love yeah. Oh no, Hercules is great. I mean, yeah, Disney uh, movies are like what a I hadn't drunk seen Hercules. that. I hadn't seen that in forever yeah. and I could I could not believe how many things I could recall like <laughs> frame for frame. Yeah. Like the the part when he's like changing oh, into man. a portal like in the binky yeah. and like the little sucker every like, last like, drop. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember, like, I remember like every yeah, I know, man. frame of that movie. Ugh. I felt, I felt like a lunatic. Oh my god. Yeah, I haven't oh, seen it while man. tipsy, but I watched it freshman year because that's what me and all yeah, my friends did I freshman wasn't year. Tipsy. I was, I was drunk. Oh okay. Yeah. I, I was really quite happy. It was, it was super fun. Uh, oh yeah. Anyway, my number one game, yes. No Man's Sky, no Man's Sky from Hello no Games. Um, it's basically like, I mean, I don't want to talk. About Starbound because Starbound was a cool game. Yeah, it's basically what I wanted Starbound to be, and so basically it's this like huge procedurally generated, absolutely stunning like really like unique art style game where you like go in a spaceship and just explore like a couple billion planets. Like they did the math on it where it's like if you spent one second at each planet in this game you would be playing from now until, like, the year, like, 5,000 or something like that. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's it's literally impossible to do. Yeah. So and it's like you got this crazy like, awesome spaceship and you fly around and like there might be some multiplayer and there's like all these cool like giant dinosaur alien things oh, and like no, there's just all these like in, like you know a, a nearly infinite number of different worlds that you can just like fly around to and explore and like it's just like really beautiful and you have like this awesome spaceship thing and then you can also get out of your spaceship and walk around on the planet and yeah, like things about that toby that i was just gonna say is yes one it is multiplayer it is? okay yeah yeah and you have to like on purpose go and like talk to somebody and tell them where you are oh, so God. you can like try to meet up oh because, geez. Like, you, you're not gonna run into people on accident oh wow. that's how big this world is that's like amazing. you're not gonna you're not gonna run into people you're gonna have to like deliberately try to meet up that's awesome and the other thing, okay, this is my only hang-up about this game. Uh, one, I'm not super in love with the art style. I get it, and I understand, like, why people would be into it. Just not my cup of tea. Um, the ships look a little too gummy for me. Like, <laughs> uh, a little too gummy ship for me. But um, I'm worried about what you're actually going to do. Oh, yeah. All the stuff you're, I've seen what's so my motivation? far. Like, yeah, it's like oh, we, have the, we have the biggest world and the cool cool ships and like like you like these freaking like brachiosauruses that are purple and like weird shit and I love it all. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just like, who is this person I'm controlling? What mm. is their conflict? Because like I mean honestly, like um, I mean basically, if you want to tell me like it's Minecraft and you can build stuff or like you know, I'm okay with that. It probably won't be the game I'm gonna buy, mm -hmm. um, but. At least I would understand what's going on. Because right now, they're just like, all they're throwing at me is art style, explorable world, vastness, procedural generatedness. Right. I'm not getting any like actual idea of what the game's going to be like. Being stuck in a giant theme park. Yeah. yeah. And you're That's just fun. wandering around. Yeah. And it's all, it all looks great. And you just have no tokens, you know? <laughs> Oh, man. That's, just from, that's just from like, the, the sound of it, the first problem is going to be like, what, what's the point of having this massive universe if you can never see it all? Yeah. Right. I mean, maybe it's a little existential, but it's yeah. like, no, I'm, I'm like, not a billionaire. I'm a billionaire. Yeah. In fact, I'm a trillionaire. It's like, look, man, I only have enough time to spend a million dollars to begin with. I don't care if you're a trillionaire. Yeah. And we're back. So Nicholas. Yo. So everybody have a good bathroom break. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right. Let's reel it back in. So All No right. Man's Sky. It's a big world. We don't know much else about it besides how big the world is. But I can totally understand why that would top someone's anticipation list, especially somebody who is uh kind of let down by Starbound. Uh, mm. No disrespect to that game. Uh, for what it no, was. No, but actually, the, the, the thing with Starbound is like a kind of last direction. And now that you kind of brought that up, I'm like, oh man, what if I lose direction with, with this? And now I'm a little worried. Oh god, now Toby's weak. Uh -oh. nah. No, right, I mean, Nicholas. it'll still be cool. Anyway, right. Nick, do your thing. So, Let's see what your is like, the bro. my number five is Legend of Zelda Wii U. Yeah. Okay, uh, that was like my number I'm seven. Excited about this. Hmm. Uh, I looked up some videos today, and I'm really excited about the whole open world and like. It being it like as big as say like Far Cry or maybe like a small like Ob Oblivion or Skyrim and just have that Nintendo art direction, I feel like it'll make it a pretty intriguing world. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Epona is going to be rejoining Link and the way they have just her AI and like you're not going to be like bogged down by terrain or trees mm -hmm. or it'll like avoid all that. So that's pretty exciting. Have more exploration than Zelda and have it be more action oriented. And less like bogged down by just ground level combat and just the usual Zelda formula. Mm -hmm. um, so Are there still going to be like that. the dungeons and stuff? Because like, I mean, I feel like there will be. Okay, because you can't really have Zelda out. dungeons. Yeah. No, but mainly I showed off the open world. Okay. Um, so that's my number five. Hey, uh, number four is Halo Five. All right. Guardians, uh, three four three studios. The reason I put it on my list is like, I was pretty impressed by Halo 4 at least what they were trying to do in terms of like having more emotion in the story, more better character writing the whole thing with Master Chief's relationship with Cortana and how that was put on the rocks and like her like degeneration they did a pretty good job on that 
I'm hoping with Halo 5 they focus more on, like, Master Chief and just, like... Because in Halo 4, they, like, introduce, like, what happens to these people that put in the Spartan program. How can they, like, go back into society once, like, war is over? Oh. And I hope... Because they're, like, genetically modified teenagers, basically. They started out as, and then they're made into these super soldiers. So I hope, like, there's more focus on maybe Master Chief's character because it really hasn't had a character in the last four games. So I'm interested and hopeful that they'll address some of those issues. Uh, number um, three. Oh, so real Sorry. quick, uh, I just want to say one thing about the Zelda thing before. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw a thing about, I think it was from E3, Yep. Uh, with one of the creators, and they were saying that there definitely is going to be dungeons. Just I want to throw that out there because I know that's a concern somebody brought up there. All right. All right. So Halo 5, a controversial but good choice, Nick. Uh, what is your number three most anticipated game? Uh, my number three is Star Wars Battlefront. So All right. Developed by DICE, published by EA. Yeah. yeah. yeah they were probably like, what, DICE. seven or eight, I think? On your top yeah. five? DICE yeah. is really good multiplayer with Battlefield Bad Company and with Battlefield 3 and coming up Battlefield Hardline. Mm-hmm. So. Well, actually, uh, Hardline's produced... Uh, or do, oh. was it developed by um, different developer. Yeah, the guys who did um, Dead Space. What are they called? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, they got they got brought in, they got brought over to to develop that while Dice is working on Battlefield. Oh, Battlefield. oh sweet. Which Ooh, I think is cool yeah. because it shows that they're like dedicating their time to to battle to this Battlefield. Yeah. The series deserves it, man. It's been too oh. long. Mm-hmm. Um, so 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 such. I, I number spoilers. Three, number two. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I was just saying, spoilers, it's on my list as well, and I can just remember wasting so many hours of my life Yeah, just on my phone. I'm a little hesitant about it not being third person, just because, like, I feel like it's going to feel weird for me, because that was part of the experience, you know? Yeah, um, sure. I don't know. I'm optimistic, though. I'm yeah. optimistic. All right, All right Nick. Anyway, next one. Onward, Nick. Number two. Um, I don't think this is on anyone's probably, like, either top ten. Um, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Oh, yeah, I figured this one would be on your list, actually. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited with just this the story, like behind like Big Boss and the father of Solid Snake, and it going every all of these games going open world, and just this whole new engine that Kojima is producing, and I feel pretty good. Like you can actually like it'll like, live up to its name of like tactical espionage action because you'll have like this wide open space that you can just plan out your point of attack and infiltration. Mm-hmm. See, I know like next like, to nothing about like any of those games, but that that, that um, sounds kind of cool. And the cool thing about MJ5 is like you can like do this like Assassin's Creed thing where like you can create like your own like mercenary unit and like train your own guys and you have like your own like base of operations that you can actually go around and like check on your troops and all that. And um, that's cool. That's pretty cool. And I would honestly not be surprised if that be, it like goes down as like one of the the, the finer moments of that uh, franchise. Yeah, and I feel like Kojima is really getting a good focus on like actual like gameplay and mm-hmm. innovative gameplay rather than very like cutscene heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's more it's focused more on like interactive storytelling rather than just a lot of cutscenes. Yeah, that's the yeah. way I think it happens with a lot of uh, Japanese made games. It's just kind of like yeah. really, they're great games, but it's just like they're more just like movies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like also like you might have dialogue options, but they don't really affect anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, the ones that bother to give you a dialogue option, they may not actually carry any gravity. Yeah. yeah. And as for my number one, uh, couldn't be anything other than Bloodborne ah. uh, from software. Yeah. Uh, I figured that would be on someone's it. list. I love the Dark Souls series, Dark Souls 1 and 2. Um, I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing from Bloodborne. The combat is looks really smooth, and like the dodging system, it seems like they're going to make players focus more on like dodging and not like trying to like, turtle and uh, focus on like, like tower shields and just block enemy attacks and then hit them like you did in Dark Souls 1 mm-hmm. and 2. It's going to focus more on, like, dynamic combat, especially mm-hmm. with, like, the different, like, weapons that you can, like, combine your gun and your axe to, like, make this huge great axe, and then you can, like, separate them and, like, go into sh- straight into, like, either range mode or do Yeah, 
it's, it's got like cool. a certain, it looks great. yeah it's got like a certain grit to it and everything like yeah. where it's like it feels like super heavy but at the other time yeah. you're like sticking swords and guns together and like you like, yeah yeah and like you're swinging like sides bigger than your body and stuff like yeah it has a like <laughs> an ARPG <laughs> twist to it but yeah. with western RPG like combat it's yeah like and I then really like the art design yeah the art the art's beautiful and then you incorporate the whole um kind of Victorian steampunk yeah kind of thing. yeah I really like the aesthetic. It's the just other thing like, is, I could never get into Dark Souls, but like I feel like with this, like I could kind of get because I always like I liked the idea like, of it and stuff like that. But yeah. for me, it was like it was just a little too dreary, and also like you had to like fight for every inch of exposition you got in that game. And like yeah. I was just like, I don't have the time for this. Yeah. Like in order to like hunt it down, wow! Like I mean, if you give me a game where I have to hunt for exposition, that's one thing. But if you give me like I'm okay with it, but if you give me a game where like I have to hunt down for every tiny little piece of exposition, yeah. and I'm like always dying, like. I, yeah. I just like I'm, I can't. Like I tried well, playing it. Like it just wasn't happening. I, I want to say one thing about that that I will say. Um, one, I honestly think every game in the world, and rightfully so, wishes it was Bioshock every once in a while. <laughs> and be like, we don't have room for this story. Like, what was what was the thing that made Bioshock so charming and interesting and unique? The whole audio log thing and all that stuff. It's like, was like it was so cool and like. You, there was enough going on in the story that this this was like polished. This was shiny. Yeah, yeah. Like, this yeah was, audio, that game made audio logs a thing. Yeah, well, you no, know? but no, but I feel like I feel like audio logs now are used in a way where it's like the the game wouldn't make sense if you didn't get, pick up every audio. Oh log. yeah, yeah, it's, it's used like, as a crutch like, now. Yeah, mm. it's a crutch. It's it's lazy storytelling. Oh, yeah. Like, well, uh, the game that uh, a game that came out recently that used audio logs really really well was Shadow of Mordor. I don't know if you've like, gotten all that into that, but there's like some crazy stuff where like they like hint at like Saruman like going into Mordor like right before oh, you get cool. there, and nice. it's just like this is like, crazy shit. And I was like, man, this is so cool. cool. I I really want to get into that game. It's just something about yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't click the it's right a little way. bit. Yeah. But, but anyway, so now uh, Bloodborne looks top, uh, incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go look into what that some more just because I haven't spent a lot of time. I was well, kind of for the moment they were like they were like steampunk. Dark Souls, but faster. I was like, boom. Like, boom. <laughs> nice. Let's do it. Yeah, that was all I mean, yeah. Tough stuff to me is the, uh, the, the more dynamic combat system thing, because it's like, I feel like there's games, when it, when it comes to melee combat, there's games where you just have automatically generated dodges, or the games where you hold down a button to dodge. Mm. And like, other than that, you don't really get into any defensive stuff. Yeah. Like a lot of games, it's like you have your armor class, it's factored in, boom. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. yeah. But it be interesting to see if there's a little more of a, I don't know, block and parry or a dodge without necessarily doing a barrel roll every time. Oh, no, it's you can just do like a sidestep if you time it right. You can just like, hop back and, and, like, and, yeah, you can just go hop back. back. Yep. Like, Full blown Goku game, game with swords that made you think about sword fighting. Mm. Because basically it's like there's hack and there's slash and then there's move, you know? So yeah. it'd be really cool if maybe maybe the technology or the mechanical aptitude or whatever was there now for people to make a game that has sword play as opposed to just sword fighting. Mm. Good distinction. The language works. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess my list is my my list is next. Um, one thing I'm just gonna say real quick before I start on my list, I thought somebody would have brought up 18 Order 1886. That was my number six. Oh. Uh, that was my number six because I didn't know if Legacy of the Void was confirmed yet, so it bumped it at the last minute. Yeah, um, I didn't think about StarCraft, and if I thought about StarCraft, I probably could have anticipated it not being on your list, but. Um, yeah, so that means, no, like, that game looks oh, pretty great. Speaking of StarCraft, also, I got my... It's also coming out... Nice. 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 It's also coming out sooner than some of the other games um, yes. that we talked about. Yes, it's coming out like a month. Yeah. Um, gold. Huh? It's coming out like it a month. Gold. Yeah. Oh, it's already went gold. That's incredible. Yeah. Wait, really? Like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> For uh, a new IP uh, from a new developer, that's insane. Yeah, it's uh, it's, really their first, yeah. it's their first game. Like, yeah, yeah. like... At all, and they're going like hardball, triple A, uh, new IP, 
for nah. Sony exclusive. I mean, yeah. this, like they got a, a, a lot of people have a lot riding on this, and I think yeah. they that last demo really saved their ass as far as public opinion is concerned. I think I, I knew a lot of people. I saw a lot of people online and stuff who were like, you know, kind of dismissive of it. They were like. It's like steampunk Gears of War, but not as good, like the combat yeah, and everything. Yeah. But then they were like, but then somebody was like, no, it's like cinematics Gears of War, steampunk. Also, everything you wanted the Van Helsing movie with Hugh Jackman. Movie. <laughs> um, but, but anyway. Um, Remember that time where Tyler didn't come up with like an aptus <laughs> analogy? <laughs> Side note. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm going to start my list. I'm going. I'm actually kind of going in reverse order, because I you guys kind of already know me, and I want. I'm putting this out here to the audience, whoever watches this video. These ones that I'm about to list are pretty obvious picks for, for Tyler. All right, number one, Uncharted Four. Okay. <laughs> I just yeah. can't even describe to yeah. you how badly I want. This See, game. I didn't go into Uncharted Four because I knew that you were gonna kind of just yeah. run with it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it just. Like the the dynamic combat, the way they're making you use the environment. Um, I know they're kind of silly things, but like the the spike and the grappling hook, those two things alone are gonna just. No, I think it's great because it's like it opens yeah. it up, but it still makes it still like a, it maintains a little bit of that like lighthearted charm. You oh, know, yeah. like it opens it up and it adds a little, a little more strategy, that's, but not making it like super gritty. Sure, that's one of the things. I, Grappling hook in an adventure game until the, the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does sound kind of crazy. That's like having, yeah. that's like having like, this like battlefield game and be like, guys. We have a <laughs> hey, What about guns? We, can we have a grenade of some kind? Some kind of handheld explosive? <laughs> well, how about having a battlefield in the fourth Batman. But, yeah. <laughs> right. Which brings I, me, I mean... which brings me to number two on my list. <laughs> yes. Arkham Knight, baby. Uh, Again. Arkham Knight. Yeah. Uh, oh man. In the capable hands of Rocksteady, baby. Yeah, oh God. Um. Okay. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna say this. I want this to be said on the internet where everyone can hear it. Arkham Origins was not a bad game. Okay? No, it wasn't. It was a fucking great I, game. I, like, it was people, solid. People shit on that game online so hard, and it's ridiculous that it has arguably okay, not not to give any spoilers. I'm not gonna give any spoilers because don't get me wrong. The end of Arkham, <laughs> like I mean, crazy shit. But Arkham Origins has one of the best storylines of of the Batman games. No, I mean, it, it, I will. Say, it has given me the hardcore Joker Batman like feel of oh, any yeah. piece of oh, Batman oh. media in yeah. the entire world. Yeah. Like there's yeah. Uh, like yeah. the the Joker stories they tell with that game are incredible. Oh, it's absolutely yeah. incredible. Um, I think it's because there was like Arkham City is like a nine point five. And like uh, yeah. one like, more of that. And yeah, and then when and then Arkham Origins was like an eight point five. And people really? lost perspective, being like, yeah. you know, most games are a seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, one thing real quick. I'm going to throw this out here. Just so, people, in a second. just so people on the internet don't think I haven't done my due diligence, I know that the timing on some of the takedowns and stuff was differently. Was differently uh, oh, and the switching you know, of the, the trigger buttons? like. Yeah. Well, there's just a few little that. things like that. I understand yeah. it frustrating for me it had been long enough since i had played arkham city that uh when i got arkham origins uh that uh, the trigger switching didn't uh bother me, i didn't know even the difference between an 8.5 and a 9.5 not the difference between an 8.5 and a 6 yeah. yeah people act like this is the word yeah. terrible. it really wasn't um uh, yeah so the other thing is i mean just the st story wise i'm really interested too about it because paul dini isn't writing it this time mm -hmm. uh but it's being co-written by Jeff Johns, uh, or at least being supervised by Jeff Johns, who's a, a badass. Um, and just, like, people of his ilk, I trust him. Uh, the thing is, they're inventing of this Arkham Knight character. Mm. People people are, like, refusing to believe online that it's, that it's really 100% a brand-new character. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, 
it's got to be somebody else. And Jason Todd uh, got thrown around a lot. I know. Right. Uh, one of one theory that's going around online right now that I'm in love with is that the whole thing is like it's supposed to look like Scarecrow is getting all these baddies together to like make this uh, make this whole thing go down. And one theory is that it's actually Damian Wayne is the one that's uh-huh. like plotting these things mm-hmm. because of some of the events in Arkham City would be upsetting to Damian Wayne. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, that's and, to put it lightly. Like. <laughs> well, hey, I'm trying, to, yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be unspoilery. If that game came out years ago, I feel like we could talk I, about it. Whatever, dude. Hey, you make, you make it sound like Damian Wayne like would spill his soda and be like, well, that's a little disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> He's upset. It. He's upset. Um, but He's upset, right? I like the idea that. But I'm still kind of pissed. Yeah. yeah. I like the idea that Damien Wayne could be involved somehow. Uh, and of course, they talked about having the Red Hood DLC available. So that kind of implies that Jason Todd is somehow involved. Some people think that Jason Todd might be the Arkham Knight. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm not. I wouldn't be mad if that happened. But I also. I'm also more curious. I'm also just kind of excited because that Rocksteady is like saying, "Hey, look, we told these great stories that were written by Paul Dini, who has already had his way with the canon. Mm-hmm. Like, let us actually take charge here. Mm-hmm. You know, let us create something that you know that isn't Paul Dini necessarily approved. You know what I mean? That's like a little bit different. Let us mess with the canon. And I'm cool. I th- I trust them. Um, so the next game, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I think most people know, um, is Evolve. Yeah. Uh, I think it looks great. I really like the idea of, um, like, like the way we did with Borderlands 2, <laughs> is we bought it, we all bought it on Steam, and we sat with four computers in the same room and played Borderlands while yelling over our shoulders at each other. <laughs> and I, I really like the idea of having us all, all of us having our computers and be like all logging in as hunters at the same time, be like, all right, let's go find oh, some yeah, freaking. Let's go find some. Who's going to be our fifth, though? Are we going to get, like, Hank to have, like, sign on and have him be the monster? No, we, yeah. could, we could. Or I'm saying, like, randoms. we could go and be like, let's just find some freaking, like, dude. Some schmo on the internet, yeah. Just right now and just, like, light him up. Like, nice, I, man. I, I totally, I'm into that. I want to be the sniper guy. I'm just, I'm throwing that out there. <laughs> I want to be the guy with the Gatling gun because I'm not a <laughs> 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 That's where I'm at right now. Um. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Nick will probably be the guy with the giant portable cage. That like cage. Okay. Set in the traps. I, yeah. I mean, that guy that guy is important. That dude is so important. Um Okay, so number four for me is Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, we yeah, talked about that. Yeah. We don't need to say that much. I just look forward to wasting days of my life. Just actual days. Uh, you know, like, oh speaking you know, of actual days, I passed the three day mark on Dragon Age Inquisition today. Like You're total sick. hours. Yeah, total hours over seventy two now. Yeah. Oh I passed God. I passed I passed one. Yeah. Uh, I just <laughs> passed one. I felt pretty I felt pretty oh, shitty about that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much you, how you feel. No, it's like uh, I'm sitting there like I think like the next mission is like the end game and there's still like three whole open world areas that I haven't even what? touched yet. And I'm oh, just yeah. like I have so many side quests. You could beat the game without discovering oh. those. Right? Yeah. But um, anyway, anyway, sorry, so keep going. Say, um yeah, so uh, with Star Wars Battlefront, like I just want to waste Dorito fueled days of my life <laughs> on that game. Uh, and the last, um, the last one is Until Dawn by Supermassive. Oh uh, yeah, I'm super excited about this game. Supermassive hasn't done a, a, any real huge mm. AAA games. Is this the one where he plays the park ranger? Uh oh no, that that also oh, looks cool though. God. That game, what was it? Um, Wildfire? Yeah, maybe. Oh, something like that. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I want to play that game. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, um, yeah, that game looks really good. But um, Until Dawn is a horror game. Uh, with a, it's, it's with um. Oh, is it the one with Hayden Panettiere and maybe the Cthulhu? Yeah, they got Hayden Panettiere. Yeah. Other, uh, pretty good actors and actresses. Mm. Um, some serious crazy mocap, and um. Mm. The tagline is, anyone can die, everyone can die, anyone can live, everyone can live. And mm. so, like, it's played in vignettes, and there's eight people living there up in a cabin in the woods, kind of like classic cliche horror stuff, and then they can, the, like, 
how you play the game, depending on what you do, can determine who who lives and who dies. And you could basically at the end like get everybody killed or save everyone, like depending yeah. on how you play. It seems kind of like uh, telltale-y, like, like kind of yeah. story dialogue. Uh, but I think I mean some of the things that some concerns people raise with it is that a lot of the controls look to be kind of um, heavy rainish. Like oh, where it's like, no. like kind of quick timey. It's like a little okay. quick timey event things. I mean, I don't know. For I always kind of talked shit about that, but then I played a game, the any game by Telltale, and I was like, I can live with this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, for me anyway, like the, for me the story and like everything is cool, mm -hmm. and I'm more interested in that. Um, right. I'm also. It's about the mechanics. Yeah. Moving the story a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm also I'm. The, th the other thing that I'm excited about it is that I like the um, – some of the guys from uh, IGN UK were talking about this was, like, the idea of you getting around a couch with a bunch of your friends, like, with just one controller and being, like – and seeing, like, who uh, – like, or you could pass it around, pass the controller around, see, like, oh, you got your bitch killed and I just kept my guy alive or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, shit like that where it's, like, where you're having a night of, like, what, like, the way yeah. your story turns out being, like <laughs> – arbitrarily assigned basically. Yeah, I kinda wanna see it I kinda hope that game can be played through in like a couple hours so like it can be like multiple from, yeah, playthroughs from, of it kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, from what I heard they're emphasizing the multiple play playthrough thing. Okay. It's not a also I'm really I'm really pulling for some Cthulhu stuff. Like I know like people kinda like hinted at that. Like <laughs> I'm just uh, really yeah, swinging there, for that. There there <laughs> might be a Cthulhu thing in that they said, but there was also another game that was uh what's the one? The one about the little boy, was it called Ethan something? Oh, yeah. I remember, I remember that. The Journal of Ethan something or, like, whatever about the kid that went missing. Yeah. They're, like, all of a sudden, there was, like, in one of the trailers for that, they were just, like, tentacle. And we're, like, what? <laughs> when no one had any idea there was going to be tentacles in there. Uh, that's just what she said. first kind of party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, so, those, uh, so that's my – that's a, a one game that I definitely wanted to include. Yeah, man. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty fun. I think those are all good lists. I'm pleased. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Tyler again. I hope you enjoyed the video. We're looking forward to making more videos like that, but also some videos of a little more polished nature. Uh, we got an idea for some kind of talk showy like things. Uh, one of the things that keeps our video content going to be that keep it fresh is that we're going to be doing it very conversationally and that's going to probably include some uh interviewee type stuff where i'm going to be talking to the other guys uh and maybe you know drawing out some information from them that they wouldn't necessarily have thought to share right off the bat and i think that conversational tone is going to um, bring a lot of cool content to you guys i hope you're as excited as we are for the next videos to come uh Thank you for checking out the proof is in the concept. We're really excited, and I hope you are too.